And he said, oh people, listen to me. Listen. Do not be harsh. Let me say a few words in my justification. Let me explain myself. Do not be harsh. Let me say a few words in my justification. I have not come here on my own accord. I have been called here by your people. They have written me over 12,000 letters calling me here. I did not come here on my own accord. And for you to send your armies against me with your unsheathed swords, do you not know who I am? Do you not know who I am? I am the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell me, is there any grandson on, of any prophet living in the time of the dunya right now? He understand this. Is there any grandson of any prophet living on this dunya right now at this time? No. I am the grandson of the prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you not know facing the enemy? Do you not know what Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about us? Al Hassan wal Hussein in say Sayyid al Shabab al Jannah. That my two sons, Hassan and Hussein, they are the leaders of the Muslim paradise. Have you not heard when Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Hussein no minni wa ana min al Hussein, Ahabba Allahu man Ahabba Hussein? Have you not heard when the Rasulullah sallallahu used to love us? You said, care for us, me and my brother. And if you do not believe me, then go ask the Sahabis who are alive today. Go ask Jafar ibn Abdullah. Go ask Zayd ibn Arkham. Go ask Anas ibn Malik. Go ask Saeed who is alive today. They will tell you on how the Prophet used to love us. And then, When the enemies did not care, Shimr ibn Ziyad and all these other generals of the armies of Yazid, they did not care, did not listen. They started to attack the companions and the family of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein. In that time, there used to be warfare, one-on-one, one-on-one one -on -one combat. That's how they used to start the war one-on-one -on -one combat. So they asked, so the enemies came, and then Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein, his companions came. Great companions. Which companions were they? Companions like Hadrat Muslim ibn Ausij, Hadrat Habib ibn Mazahar, Habib ibn Abdullah, and then Khur ibn Yazid who joined the army, Zaheer ibn Yaqeen, Hanzala, these companions of Rasulullah sallallahu they faced the enemy one on one, one on one. But they were stronger because Allah was with them. As soon as the enemy came, they sliced and they cut open the enemies. One by one the enemy came and one by one they got slaughtered. Until Shimon, he said, what's going on here? If we carry on like this, we're going to lose all of our men. Subhanallah, this was the strength of the, of the companions of Hadrat Sayyidina Hussein. Why? Because they had, they had the blood of Shaykh of Allah in them. They had the yaqeen of Allah in them. They were not afraid of dying. You know why? Because they had Iman in their heart. That if they died, they would become Shaykh of Allah. They were not afraid. One by one, they were beating and killing the enemy until Shimon and Ibn Ziyad said, what's going on here? And they, and they forced their enemy all together to attack Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein's camp. And then the people, and then the first to fall was Habib, Habib ibn, ibn Mazaha. No, the first to fall was Muslim ibn Ausij. When Muslim ibn Ausij fell, Hadrat Sayyidina Imam, Imam Hussein, he ran to him. And he said, oh Muslim, glad tidings be upon you, Mubarak to you. He said, what for? Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein said, you are the first to die for the family of the Prophet. Allah. 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 Oh Muslim, Mubarak to you, for you are the first one to die for the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he turned around to Habib ibn Mazahar. While he was dying, Muslim ibn Ausij, 
he turned round to Habib at the Mazar and he said, Oh Habib, take my last words of Nasiha. Allah, he's dying. Allah, Allah. He's dying. And he turns round to Habib and he says, Habib, take my last words of advice. Allah. You know what he said to Habib? Habib, remember, make sure you do not die after Hussein. Allah. Habib, make sure you do not die after Hussein. Make sure you die protecting Hussein. Make sure you die before Hussein, protecting Hussein. Make sure you don't die after Hussein. And then the second before was Habib ibn Mazaha. And then after him, Habib ibn Abdullah. And one by one, they fell, but they became shaheed in the way of Allah. And then Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein, his own son, his own son Ali Al Akbar, who was a beautiful young man, handsome man, and he sought the permission from his father, let me go out in the battlefield. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein said, Look, my son, I can give you the ijazah, but you, you and your, your puppy, she will not give you ijazah. Sayyid Al Zen. For you know how much she loves you. You know how much she came for you when you were young. If you want to ask for permission to go on the battlefield, go ask permission from Sayyid Lady Zainab. And he goes to Sayyid Zainab, Sayyid Zainab says, I cannot, I cannot part you from my eyes, but I have no choice. I have no choice but to send you in the battlefield to protect our family, to protect Hadrat Sayyid Imam Hussein and the son Ali Akbar. Even though he fought many, many enemies, many Yazidis, and he killed them. And he was a beautiful young man. Even the enemies looked upon him, and you know what they said? They said, SubhanAllah, he looks like the Prophet. That's what they said. They said, SubhanAllah, he looks like the Prophet. But guess what? Despite looking like the Prophet, they still killed him. They still killed him. And he fell to the floor, and when he fell to the floor, he said, Oh, Father. Other Sayyidina Imam Hussain ran to him and said, My son, do not worry. And he said, Ya, Ya Father. And he had a spear through his chest, which is sticking out his back. Can you believe this? Can you take that pain? Can you take that pain? Ali Akbar was taking that pain and he said to your father, Oh Father, have I done well? Have I done well? But the Sayyidina Imam Hussain said, My son, you don't have to worry no more because after this time, your grandfather, your great grandfather, Rasulullah is waiting for you on the other side. You don't have to feel no more pain. Rasulullah is waiting for you on the other side. And then he went back inside his tent, Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain, and he brought out his baby. He thought maybe they would have some pity upon the baby. The baby was screaming and crying and uh, their wife, they were calling out to Hussein, that Hussein, come, caress and cuddle your baby. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain went back into the tent and they caressed and cuddled their baby. And they said, the women folk said, Ya Hussein, we don't have no water. He hasn't had no water for three days. For three days. The baby was crying. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain came out of the tent and they thought that maybe they would have some pity. Maybe they would have some humanity. Maybe they would have some, some other or even a speck of other than Muhammad. But what did they do? They struck an arrow in the neck of the baby. Ali al Azgar. And the blood ran down the hands of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain. And the blood, he took out the arrow of that chota bacha, six month old baby. And then he lifted his hands to the sky full of blood. And he says, Ya Allah, give me suffer upon your decree. Ya Allah, give me suffer upon your decree. And this is a man whose children are dying in front of him. This is a man whose companions are dying in front of him. And he's carrying those bodies from the battlefield back to his tent. He's seen his sons die. He's seen his nephews die. He's seen his brothers die. He's seen his brother's sons die. He's seen his companions die. And he's still standing there with the bravery and the courage in standing up to the opposition and to the enemies of Allah. You know what they said? The enemies, even they were alarmed and they said, SubhanAllah, how can this man be? For his babies have died in front of him, his sons have died, and he is still content with Allah. Look at him asking from Allah. 
Adar Sayyid and Imam Hussein. One by one they died until Adar Sayyid and Imam Hussein was the last one standing. Was the last one standing. Are you still with it? Are you still with Hussein? Are you still with Imam Hussein? Are you still with Imam Hussein at the back? Because if you're not, we are still with Hadrat Sayyid and Imam Hussein. We are with them in this dunya and inshallah we will be with them in the akhirah. Remember, if we remember them in this life, they will remember us in the next life. And then Hadrat Sayyid and Imam Hussein was the last man standing. Bodies were all around him. Blood and bodies were all around him. Until Adar Sayyid and Imam Hussain became so thirsty, he had not had a sip of water for three days. Three days. We cannot survive without water for 20 hours and we stop screaming. Do you remember Ramzan? Adar Sayyid and Imam Hussain did not have a sip of water for three days. And then he went towards the river. Which river? Which river? Yes, the river of Euphrates. He went towards the river of Euphrates to get some water. And then their enemies, they stopped Imam Hussein from drinking the water. They stopped him. They surrounded him. Hadrat Sayyid and Imam Hussein said to them, what are you doing? Let me drink some water. They stopped him from drinking some water. He said, he said to the enemies, oh enemies, what are you going to do? What are you going to do on the day of Qiyamah? On the day of judgment, when you come to my grandfather Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ask him to drink from the Hawzi Gosa. What are you going to do when today you have stopped water from the family of the Messenger of Allah? You are stopping me from drinking water. What are you going to do on the day of Qiyamah? But they still surrounded Imam Hussein. They did not have, did not allow him to have even one sip of water. They kept, kept circling Imam Hussein, circling him. Some of the narrators afterwards, they say, uh, the narrators from the family, the women folk who told, were looking through the tents. They said that when the enemies were circling Imam Hussein, it was like sheep, sheep around the Lion of Allah. It was like sheep were confused around the Lion of Allah. The Lion of Allah was in the middle. The sheep were circling him left and far, left and right, left and right, right and left. They did not know what to do. You know why? Because nobody wanted to take the responsibility in killing Hussein. Nobody wanted to take the hand, the sole responsibility on killing Imam Hussein until Shimra said, attack him. And then somebody, they threw, they struck an arrow and the arrow hit the neck of Hadrat Sayyid and Imam Hussein and the blood gushed forth. The blood was pouring into the river of Euphrates. And even then, Hadrat Sayyid and Imam Hussein, he took out the arrow from his neck and he turned around to the enemy and he said, what are you doing? Do you not know? Why are you trying to kill me? Why are you trying to kill me? I have not done, I have not killed any insan. I have not taken anybody's property. Why are you trying to kill me? Do you not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you on the day of Qiyamah? Why are you trying to kill me today? Do you not know that you will face Allah and Allah the Rasul on the day of Qiyamah? How will you face Allah? How will you show your face to Allah and to my beloved grandfather Rasulullah and you're trying to kill me today? And the, and the scene was so touching that many of their enemies, they stepped back. But when they stepped back, Shibur, he forced his enemies and he said, Oh, oh enemy, uh, oh my army, oh soldiers, go forth, surround him, attack him. Simultaneously, all of them, they started to attack Adr Sayyid and Imam Sen with their swords, with their spears, and with their arrows all together. When Hadrat Sayyid and Imam Hussain, he took so much and he fell to the floor. When he fell to the floor, do you know what he did? He still remembered Allah. He still remembered Allah, he fell to the floor. He put his forehead in sujood to the floor and he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. This is a man who's faced so much his babies have died in front of him. His families have died in front of him. Every 
everybody's companions have died in front of him, but still he's remembering Allah at this time. Sayyidah Zainab is looking through the tents and she cannot believe her own eyes, witnessing all of this in front of her own eyes. And she was crying out from the tents and she said, Oh sky! She turned to the sky. She said, oh sky, why don't you fall down upon these enemies? Look what they are doing to the beloved grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh sky, fall down upon these enemies. She could not bear. Nobody could bear to watch their beloved, their master, their imam fall to the floor with wounds of swords and spears and arrows all over their body, bleeding profusely. And then Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain fell to the floor, put his forehead to the ground and raised the zikr of Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, until one ill-fated, treacherous person from the army of Shimon, he got off of his horse and Shimon said, who will separate his head from his body and this ill-fated, this wretched, person from the army of Shimon, he came and he took out his sword and he separated the head from the body of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussein. He took off the head and then Shimon and Ibn Ziyad said, now we will take off the heads of all of the companions, of all of his companions, all of them. And they took the heads of 72 people. When they took off the head, they cut off the heads of 72 people. These are the Ahl al-Bayt. These are the family, these are the companions of Hadrat Imam Hussein and the Ahl al-Bayt. And then they used the horses to trample their bodies, trample their bodies until there were pieces and pieces of body. Somebody's arm was over there. Somebody's leg was over there. Somebody's body was split into half. When Sayyid al Zainab saw this with her eyes she started crying profusely and she turned to the sky and this was a famous call and a famous call from Hadrat Sayyidah Zainab anha alayhi salam and she said oh angels first she said oh Muhammada oh Muhammada Ya Muhammada, Ya Muhammada, may the angels of the skies send salutations upon you. Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, look down. This is your son lying here in a pool of blood. This is your beloved Hussein, your son lying in a pool of blood. Today his shroud is blood. His body has been cut into pieces. His progeny has been killed. His family has been killed and his women and your, your family, your women have been made prisoners and captives today. Ya Muhammada, Ya Muhammada. She kept saying this and it was so touching at that time that even many of the Yazidis started to cry from, from the hearing of Sayyidah Zen. Even they started to cry. They felt something in their hearts but it was too late by then. I'm going to finish off on this last narration. <coughs> one day, there was only one survivor. There was only one male survivor. Who was that male survivor? Sayyidina Imam Zain al Abidin. He was the one survivor. He was a Bajah as well. Some say he was 16, some say he was 18, different narrations. He was very sick. He was sick. And they were nursing him in the tent. When the enemies looted the tents, Allah, they looted the tents. They stole, they looted, they took wherever they want. Some narrations even say that they ripped off the earrings of some of the women folk. They even tried to rip the earrings of Sayyidah Sakina who was the daughter of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain. Anyway, when they saw Imam Zain al Abidin laying on the bed, laying on the couch there laying, and they said, hold on, we thought we killed everybody. Shimar came, Ibn Ziyad came, and they were about to kill Imam Zain al Abidin. Hadrat Sayyidina Zainab, she stood in front protecting, 
protecting her nephew. And she said to the enemies, O oh, Shimr, O oh, Ibn Ziyad, have you no Iman? Have you no shame that you've killed all of the progeny of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You want to kill another child? He's sick. He needs nursing. We are nursing him. He's sick. He needs help. So they left him alone. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Zain al Abidin, he saw every single thing what happened in Karbala with his own eyes. He heard and he saw. Many, many years later in Medina Park when he grew up, through the bazaar of Medina, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Zain al Abidin used to walk through the bazaar in Medina. Imagine the scene. You know the butchers cutting meat? You know the meat shops? You have the Khan? They used to shut their shops. They used to shut their shops, put kapra over the meat. Every time Imam Zain al Abadi would walk through the bazaar, all of the meat shops used to shut their shops, used to put kapra over the meat. Then somebody, public, they asked, well, What's going on here? I came to buy some meat. Why are you shutting up the shop for? It's not. End of the day, they said, be quiet. Let the Imam pass. Let the Imam pass. Let the Imam pass. Others say the Imam Zain al Dami used to pass and they used to give salam. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam al Ahl al Bayt. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam al Ahl al Bayt. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam al Ahl al Bayt. Everyone. Until Imam Zain al Abidin used to walk through the bazaar and out of the bazaar and then they used to open up their shops. Then the, the meat, the butcher said to the person, do you not understand? The reason why we close our shops is because every time Imam Zain al walks through our bazaar and looks at our meat, he starts to cry. He starts to weep. He starts to cry profusely. He cannot stop crying from day to the night, from the night to the day. He's cried so much that there are scars coming down his cheeks from the tears of his eyes. Why? Because every time he sees meat, every time he sees meat, it reminds him of the bodies scattered in Karbala. Every time he sees meat, it reminds him of the bodies and the pieces of the bodies scattered in Karbala. This is the reason why we shut our shops when the Imam walks by. From Allah, we have come, and to Allah, we will return. Finish off with the poem of Imam Hussein. Ke teri nasle paak mein hai, bacha bacha noor ka. Teri nasle paak mein hai, bacha bacha noor ka. Tu hai aine noor, tera sab karana noor ka. Insaan ko bhi.